education profession prides itself on relationships being the foundation of great teaching and learning. But this statistic from the latest Microsoft in Education report shares that 66% of leaders and educators are worried about kids cheating with AI, and 52% of students are worried about being accused of cheating with AI. That is a pretty toxic relationship statistic, and it is really time to talk about how to design a better path forward, especially because it's been about a year and a half now since we have had mainstream access to generative AI tools. Hi everyone, I'm Saba. I'm the CEO of Designing Schools, and on this channel, I help you learn the skills and mindsets that will give you a human advantage in an AI world. So hit subscribe for insights and strategies on how we can be irreplaceable in a world with AI. So I recently attended the Student AI Summit that was hosted by the Orange County Department of Education, and it was just so inspiring and insightful to hear how young people are thinking about generative AI and what what it means for teaching, learning, and also for their college and career plans. This video that we're creating today, and we have a resource guide that goes along with it, is really designed to share a couple of things. Number one, what to do if you're accused of cheating with your student or parent, or number two, you're an educator or a leader that wants to get more strategic about your approach. And this video is really inspired by my mentee. She is this incredible, curious, confident, enthusiastic young lady who had such ambitious plans for AI and what she was thinking about it and how it, what it meant for her and her college and career plans. And she was part of a keynote and also a breakout session. So I was sort of mentoring her, not that she needed any of my help really, um, but in that we got to have some really great conversations. And one of the things I was really curious about in our first meeting was just what she was hearing about AI, what people were thinking and feeling and what they were hearing. And one of the things that she said was really a top concern amongst many students is the mixed messaging they get from their teachers. Some teachers say it's cheating, don't use it. Others say it's completely okay, this is how you can use it. And we even see that with things like Grammarly, right? Like Grammarly is cheating, no it's not. And this confusion is happening across the board, K-12, higher education, even enterprise. And what makes it worse though in the K-12 higher education space is that we know this is a time when young people are incredibly anxious about their future, we have studies that show like 75% of high school graduates don't feel prepared to make college and career decisions after graduation. If you follow Professor Scott Galloway, he recently shared a post called War on the Young, sharing how challenging today's political, social, and economic climate is. Today's 25-year-olds, he says in the study, share that they make less than their parents and their grandparents did at that same age, yet they carry student debt loads that are just unimaginable to earlier generations. Neither the minimum wage nor the median wage has kept pace with inflation or productivity gains, and I think we all see on the daily how housing costs have just outpaced everything. This generation is truly caught in a messy middle where we are stuck between our past practices, we see what we need to do for the future, but we're not all getting enough support and guidance on what to do in the present moment. And so for those who are even getting support, many of them are struggling to be like, okay, I know this is what we need to do, but how do we turn papers into projects? And really truthfully, a lot of things that just should have happened assessment-wise, learning-wise a long time ago, and what AI has done is really forced itself on an education system that just wasn't really proactive in keeping pace with many emerging technologies. And while technology has continued to progress, we've seen researchers, academics, and even the workforce really emphasize the changes that are needed. But while we've seen pockets of this innovation, the scaling just hasn't been as successful. And it's important to note that this is not just a technology challenge or a workforce challenge. It's really a human challenge that affects our societies. And, you know, one example is like fake news. You know, it's something that we regularly hear about and are concerned about in the headlines. But in 2016, Stanford actually warned us of this exact scenario. They did a survey, middle school, high school, and college students across 12 states, and they were asked to evaluate the information that was presented in tweets, comments, and articles. And what they said was that students across the board were duped 
over and over again. Their conclusion, and remember, it's about 10 years ago now, was that if children are the future, the future might be very ill-informed. And after using, um, after seeing these results, they ended up creating a curriculum. And in 2022, the Stanford School of Education did another study showing that it only took six hours of instruction to help students to really begin to develop these skills. Six hours and the curriculum has been free for the last 10 years. The same story is true if we look at social media. Two decades later, I mean, it's it's crazy to think and we can sort of use social media, like let's just take Facebook in 2004 and say 20 years ago. But even before that, we had like MySpace, we had other platforms as well. But even two years later, we don't have the regulations or even just the, the guidelines or consensus amongst us in society for what the best approach is for this inside of school and outside of school is a whole other conversation, but we don't even have consensus around phones inside of school. And even just as we start to see the conversation around maybe what should we do with phones inside of school, you know, phones are almost going to be a thing of the past with all the wearables that we're seeing coming on scene, which nobody is talking about at all. So let's back up here because this video was supposed to be about cheating and you might be wondering, well, why are we talking about phones and digital literacy? And the reason is we don't want to repeat the same story again with AI and we are kind of kind of kind of close to doing so despite having papers and research like dancing with robots which was written by frank levy from mit and richard marine from harvard telling us again over 10 years ago that hey ai is coming and with that environment we should be focusing on human skills like complex problem solving like cheating with ai in education or complex communication you have this viewpoint you have this viewpoint how do we align toward a shared vision and because we really neglected many of these conversations, we're now in an environment where instead of teaching safe, ethical, and responsible use of AI, we are stuck in this toxic cycle of cheating and accusations and all these different kinds of things. Now, you might be somebody who is really worried about, well, is my student going to become dependent on AI? You might be a teacher who's thinking that. It's really helpful if that's how your perspective to actually look at what AI use looks like in workplaces. So let me take you back to Sophia. Remember I told you she was super passionate. So one of the things she was passionate about was bioengineering, which by the way, I do not know a lot about. And so as she's talking to me about it, this intersection of biology and technology, it just so happened the same day OpenAI released a case study about how Moderna were integrating AI. They were talking about all the GPTs they're building, designed for very specific tasks to become more targeted at different outcomes that they are looking to create. and. I just couldn't help but think, on one hand, you have Sophia's teachers who are telling her AI is cheating. On the other side, you've got Moderna who are all in on AI using this tool and are going to expect tomorrow that their employees are proficient in safe, ethical, and effective use of this technology. So what happens when some kids are told this is cheating, others aren't, and that's the skills and mindsets that they're building towards their college and career plans? I want you to think about this in the context of, say, the technology you're using today. Imagine if when laptops first came out, you had spent your career or your school life being told that it was cheating. How would that impact you in the work that you do today? It sounds so silly to almost even say, and it's important to know that kids like Sophia are not alone. So Sophia is doing exactly what Levy and Mernine talked about in Dancing with Robux, identifying complex challenges they're excited to work on. You know, we always say, don't talk about what job you want when you grow up, talk about what problem you want to solve. And, and that's exactly what many of these kids are doing. And they need our help with the skills and mindsets so that they can be successful in navigating those. So let's go ahead and talk about three things you need to know so that you can make informed decisions for your school. Whether somebody is accusing you of cheating, be ready to advocate for yourself, or if you're a parent watching, be ready to advocate for your child and just start that conversation. So the first one we wanna talk about is AI detectors. We are gonna look at how easy they are to beat, and then we're gonna share our resource guide so that if you do find yourself either accused or if you're somebody who just wants to take a more proactive step, we hope this will help you. We have curated the research um, for you along with some email templates and other conversation starters. So to have this conversation, I am delighted to introduce you to my partner here at Designing Schools, an expert in AI policy and practice. He is probably most famous for having curated all the research on this topic. I'm excited to introduce you to Stefan Bouchard to show us just how easy it is to beat an AI detector and why. Welcome, Stefan. So tell us what you are working on today. 
All right. So today, what I want to you know work on is just to show you how arbitrary these AI writing detectors are. So what I thought we'd do is start with just a you know a simple thing, an assignment that a kid might get in school. So one example of an assignment a kid might get in school is to write an essay about a Supreme Court decision, often about the New Jersey versus TLO Supreme Court decision, because that's about schools. And so that's something they're asked to write about. So let me just put this right into Claude. This is the free version of Claude called Sonnet. Please write me a five paragraph essay on New Jersey versus TLO and the main ideas in the decision. And so here it is. Writing it's just, out an entire it's just essay. writing out the essay. And, you know, as I'm reading kind of quickly along, it does seem pretty accurate. I know a lot about the Supreme Court case. But then, of course, we want to see, well, gee, like, how does this how does this do in an AI writing detector? So let's just copy it. All right. Then I'm going to slide here so you can see. Here's a uh, an AI writing detector. It's a free one zero GPT that a lot of people use. So I'll just paste that right into there. So what, what Claude just wrote gets pasted into the detector. Let's click detect text. And did you have to sign up or create an account to use this? I didn't have to create any account. So all I did was just literally go to zero gpt.net and it's working. Oh, it says it's kind of caught me, right? It says it's crafted probably by GPT technology. Now I'm a kid, you know, and maybe maybe I don't want to get caught. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it now to just say, just have to slide this up so you can see, please rewrite this like a 10th grader. Whoa. All right, we'll let it go to work. And why would that language be important? Like write like a 10th grader? Because what writing detectors do is they look for predictability in text. So they look for like how often certain words commonly appear to one another, next to one another and kind of similarity in sentence structure. That's a couple of things. So I'm trying to just perturb the output a little bit to move away from that predictability. So now let's copy this. Let's go back to the writing detector. And of course, we want to go to the home and reset it. I'm going to paste this in here. Click detect text. See how it does. And is this the same way, like something like Turnitin and other tools would work as well? Yeah, they all work the same way. Wow, look at that. It's authentically written by a human. That's a big flip in the score. I've actually never seen a score flip that much um, after one try. But we went from 100% AI all right, to 100% human. So as promised, I want to share with you our resource guide that we put together. This is a guide for you, whether you are a student, whether you are a parent, whether you are an educator, whether you are a leader, whether you are a concerned member of society who wants to take a proactive approach in being able to design a path forward. And some of the things that we've done in here for you is really just highlight some of the main research points. Like I said, Stefan has done an amazing job of curating research. We have everything linked for you over here. One of the research studies that I want to draw your attention to is this one that was also done by Stanford where they share that the detectors are not reliable. Worse yet, they are especially unreliable when the real author, a human, is not a native English speaker. And one of the things you can see here is that just by simplifying the word choice for native speakers and enhancing the word choice for non-native speakers significantly shifts the results that take place within AI detectors. But really, when the focus is on cheating, what we fail to look at is the big picture of how companies are expecting people to have these skills to work alongside these technologies. And this is something really important for us to be able to give our students. You can see over here, 74% of executives think that AI is going to benefit their employees. We're going to see a 65% shift in job skills and 80% of workers says that, say that generative AI improves the quality of their work. So if you find yourself in a scenario where you are accused of cheating, we do have have an email template linked in here for you that you can share. We also have some case studies that we've linked in here for you. And above all, we have some strategies for what you can do moving forward. And we also have for you in here 
an approach forward and a research piece on the need and importance for teaching AI literacy. And I really like this particular research article and this definition where they share basically that this is really important so that we have a positive relationship with technology. But what I like even more about what they've done is they've actually broken down the different aspects of AI literacy, the cognitive element, the psychological readiness, the ethics of it, and most importantly, I think the metacognitive one as well, for how the metacognitive one, I love that because that problem solving approach is encompassing of all the cognitive, the effective, the social as well. And when you take this problem solving approach to AI use, meaning we are giving kids project that they are able to engage in, where they are making decisions and they're grappling with issues. The research was really, really, really positive. They saw an improved AI problem-solving ability, a stronger ethical understanding. It helped them develop problem-solving skills and higher levels of self-efficacy and creative self-efficacy, giving people more confidence in how to use AI for problem-solving. So this guide is here and available to you linked in the show notes. And draw your attention to is this article that was written by a student. Riley said the teachers assign us work that relies on rote memorization and then tell us not to use artificial intelligence. And as we scroll through, and this article is linked for you as well, but one of the things that I thought was just so articulate was like when they thought about how they were being prepped for these standardized tests and just the rote memorization and the standardization of teaching and learning, they said these are the very skills and activities that separate people from robots. Yet instead of developing them, students are told to act like robots and just spit back information on exams. And I really want to emphasize here that obviously we know these tests matter. We know that they have an impact on getting into college and all these other things. What I think we often miss is that it is not mutually exclusive from project-based learning either or any kind of redesign of instruction. In fact, students that engage in project-based learning demonstrate higher test scores oftentimes on exams. And so they talk here about why project-based learning can not only lift standardized test scores, it also helps problem solving and critical thinking skills. So fantastic article to dive into here for you as well. It's so important to know that in no way, shape or form do we encourage the use of cheating when using these AI tools. But what we do really wanna emphasize is the importance of being able to change the way in which we design learning experiences for young people who, by the way, as I shared earlier, are so fearful of being accused, do not want AI to replace them. They want to learn how to use these tools in safe, responsible, and ethical ways. And what's even more important to know is that the cheating rates since after the introduction of ChatGPT last year have not increased at all. In fact, did you know cheating rates were at about 60% before? And I'm sure at some point we have all cheated in school. I know I have. And I know the reason for cheating, and that there's two times explicitly I can remember. It was never because I was trying to get one by my teacher or I was lazy. It was, I just didn't understand what I was supposed to do. And there's always a different reason for why kids will do what they do. And there will always be people that will find a way to do what it is that they want to do but it's our responsibility as adults to make sure that our students have the skills, the mindsets, and the tools and strategies they need to be successful in a world alongside their technology instead of, as traditionally has happened, being left to really fend for themselves. So to, it was really inspired by Sophia in this conversation to actually create a guide, whether you are an educator, a principal, superintendent, any type of administrator within a school, whether you're a parent or whether you're a student, this guide called Take Control of Your Future does a very short overview and links to the research, also case studies of how people are using AI in different industries. It has an email template that you can use in case you do find yourself accused of cheating and how to be an advocate for yourself and start that conversation. And then if you are an organization, we have an entire report on how to design effective guidelines for your organization so that everyone can have the clarity and confidence they need to move forward in a safe, ethical, and innovative way that empowers people to use the tools they have instead of creating a culture of fear and anxiety. So I hope you find these useful. If we can support you at all, we work with many organizations to design these guidelines, to talk about how we can move towards more portfolio-based learning. I'm going to be at Canva Create this year speaking about this. I'm so excited. There are so many amazing tools to really help our students move from being in the classroom to being creators in the world, and we would love to be able
able to support you in your journey as well. As I shared earlier, you can find the links to everything down in the show notes, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.